My brothers and sisters, today we gather in solidarity, not just for a game, but for a principle. We stand here united against the oppression of NBA 2K microtransactions. Those digital shackles that bind our wallets and steal our joy. They tempt us with shiny packs and digital rewards, but they keep us locked in a system where skill and dedication no longer determine success, only the weights of our pockets. I say to you today, no more. For too long, we have been lured with the false promise of victory, buried beneath virtual coins and elusive packs. We've been told that if we pay a little more, if we just reach a little deeper into our bank accounts, we too can bask in the glory of the game. Can I get an amen? If we just come together, my brothers and sisters, and recognize that this is a system designed to profit from our passion, a system that exploits our love for the basketball game, turning it into a game of chance, not skill. But I have a dream, a dream where gamers from all backgrounds can play on an even court where the content of their character, not the content of their credit cards, determines their success. I have a dream that one day we will log and experience the pure joy of the game, free from the relentless pressures of microtransactions. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Tap your neighbor and say, I know that's right. All right, thank you. Settle down, settle down, settle down. It's all right, all right, all right. Let's get into uh, <clears throat> the main reason for the segment. All jokes aside, NBA 2K25. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. Now, this specific game, is always breaking the charts when it comes to sales as they're the top most played whether the most played game on xbox most played game on playstation but more importantly it is nowhere to be found on steam why is that because for the simple fact that 2k interactive and their hatred for pc modders is at an all-time high why is that because basically the modders can take the game and make it better than they can as far as the developing studio, which you would think is a high, you would think is a highlight, right? Not to the developers. They see it as a slap in the face, especially when certain modders put the, put things that people believe should already be in the game and make it to the point where some would say that the actual PC, my GM mode is way better and much better than a console edition simply for the fact that you can customize a lot more when it comes to the modding standpoint in the PC community. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. NBA 2K25, of course, is out now on all platforms and its release is being coveted by a lot of gamers for the simple fact that it actually has significant changes to its gameplay engine. Uh, more, uh, more specifically, the dribble engine has been described as the biggest change in recent years. And this includes more lifelike gameplay as far as the new new shooting mechanics like shot canceling, rhythm shooting, and more nuanced defense options, which a lot of people who played the game was clamoring for. And these changes, of course, makes the gameplay more realistic and skill based. But of course, micro check, uh, micro, I can't even talk, micro transactions once again is back to to rear its ugly head as the reoccurring criticism for 2k nba 2k's reliance on microtransactions is still here as players find it more challenging than ever to play my career without investing an additional amount of money right 
you pay for the base game which is like 70 to 100 plus dollars if you want the deluxe edition and then only to realize that you really can't hoop at all if you don't spend extra money on microtransactions which some would say is a little unfair because if you're going to put so much emphasis on your player becoming better quicker with microtransactions then why not make the game free to play and then we would understand why microtransactions are so pivotal into making your my player actually playable on courts against other players so with that being said you know the improvements to the gameplay um is is notable and i would say that nba 2k25 definitely points out certain issues and addresses addresses them because if you think about it you know putting to the side that micro career uh that my career sucks without microtransactions the gameplay in the nba games is always good but this year they really took some strides with the gameplay like i said as far as the shooting mechanics uh the shot canceling the more skill-based dribbling to make it more lifelike as far as the realism aspect and then of course the different game modes have been uh continuous due to the heavy um reliance on certain stars in the nba and wnba in uh, re respectively because now wnba is getting more shine as far as their player base and you know girls also enjoy gaming so that's another thing to to point out and why they would even focus on my uh why they would even focus on wnba because sometimes you will look at it and you will say to yourself why in the world do we have wnba when nba by far and away is the way more profitable side of basketball well just to include everybody because inclusion is very important <laughs> i think that the wnba and the improvements upon wnba is much needed especially with the rise of popularity when it comes to that specific league so 2k25 seems to be more of a, a, a seems to be undergoing more changes when it comes to the dribbling aspect but every other aspect in the game seems to be uh, more of the same, which is, is what you can expect from an NBA 2K video, uh, what you can expect from an NBA 2K installment. Because my, if microtransactions are going to be continued to be bought by the consumer base, why even try to, to improve your game when people are still going out the way to pay an enormous uh enormous goodness hey, that's a that's a new made-up word if i ever heard it <laughs> so anyways a ginormous amount of money into the microtransaction uh system so with that being said of course the technical problems are still there as far as the uh lag as far as latency being an issue i mean one of the biggest ways you can get around that is definitely using the ethernet cord but at the end of the day, I mean, if you go to the park, you're going to experience some type of latency because 2K will never uh, prioritize having smooth 60 frames or even 30 frames in a basketball game. Because, of course, they have to put all these like look at how many people is just watching this game right here. Oh, analytic dreams video on Spotify to see the video along with the audio. But as you can see right here. All of this stuff going on in the background, some would say it adds to the realism. Some would say that it completely is why the latency the, is the way it is as far as the uh, community feedback is concerned. And another thing I wanted to note was the actual review roundup of NBA 2K25 because that's something I also wanted to get into. But basically, the review roundup for NBA 2K25 is what you can expect. 7.5 out of 10 from IGN saying that the overall, um, well, no, no. Okay. So 7.5 out of 10 from IGN, 7 out of 10 for GameSpot with them praising the game for improved graphics and realistic gameplay, but mentioned that the micro transactions could be a bit intrusive. <laughs> you don't say. Polygon gave NBA 2K25 a 8.5 out of 10 saying that they liked the game's enhancements as far as the animations is concerned and the new features in my team mode making it a most play for basketball fans you see how they they don't even address microtransactions in the in the slightest it's very interesting how some companies love to po point out the microtransactions and the amount of grind you have to put in without buying additional vc and then you realize that they want you to buy vc there's no way you can put that amount of hours to a game in in um 
and basically convince me that you have an actual job. <laughs> There's just no much. It's no amount of hours that you can put into a game like my career without microtransactions, without telling me that you just are uh, unemployed. So <laughs> we're having enough time on your side is, is very much a, a factor into leveling up your my career player without microtransactions. But of course, most people don't have time like that to play this game day in and day out. So with that being said, they end up paying for a lot of different microtransactions and the grind for VC is very um, tedious to the point where they basically force you to buy VC to get your my player to a certain point when it comes to my career. So. Anyways, that's basically the tidbits that I wanted to get into. As far as the my career in the city, I mean, it's the same old, same old. Uh, it's definitely nothing innovative. It's the same my city that we've seen. Uh, well, it's the same city that we've seen in a while. Uh, while it does have some new areas and activities um, that provides additional currency, it's still the same grind in the same city that, that has you doing pointless tasks to the point where it's like, why am I even doing this in the first place? Because uh, I could just buy microtransactions. So, well, I can just buy BC. So with that being said, uh, that's all I had to say about NBA 2K25. I just wanted to touch on the game because it came out. I totally forgot it came out, which would definitely take my Hooper card, you know, because ain't nobody doing it in real life. You know what I mean? Dropping triple doubles out here. But, you know, that's besides the point. So with that being said, uh, click my link tree in my bio. Let me know on one of my social medias. What do you think about NBA 2K25? And ultimately, what do you think about the sales and the actual review roundups of the game? And do you think that because of everybody still being in the shackles of of 2k25 as far as microtransactions do you think that one day we will come together to fight for our freedom